Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. If every single one of us held hands together in a chain of unity around Earth, would there be enough of us to go all the way around the planet? There are about seven and a half billion of us, and that's a lot, but remember that that many human bodies thrown together into one big pile would barely fill the Grand Canyon. This is all of us in one place. The physical bulk of all living human flesh on Earth today would only make a cone about 7,000 people tall and 2,000 across. That's it. But that's a three-dimensional shape. What if we made a one-dimensional, single-file line of people, each with, say, one meter of room, and we stretched that around the planet? Well, we would make it all the way around and still have 99.5% of the human population left. If we made a circle that included everyone, the ring of people would be more than 2.4 million kilometers in diameter, dwarfing the orbit of our own moon. Now that's not just a circle, that is a sir cool. <laughs> Let's talk about circles today, specifically something that they do, roll. But what is rolling? Well, rolling occurs whenever something moves with respect to something else and is always in contact with that something else. And the contact points have instantaneous velocities of zero. That is, there's no sliding. In mathematics, the path traced by a point on a rolling object is called a roulette, French for little wheel. The center of a disc produces a roulette that's just a smooth, straight line while rolling on one. And this is why discs are good wheels. A square, on the other hand, would be bumpy. But square centers can make straight, smooth roulettes across the right surfaces. This is the principle behind square wheels, which I recently had the pleasure of enjoying at the Museum of Mathematics in New York City. Stan Wagen wrote a fantastic and famous article about wheels, which I've linked down in the description below. It's a great read. He also contributed a fantastic interactive tool to the Wolfram Demonstration Project that allows you to build a wheel and then find the corresponding road shape that allows it to roll smoothly. The roulette traced by a point on a disc as it rolls on a straight line has a special name. It's called a trochoid from the Greek word for wheel, trochos. Now, trochoids can be curtate or prolate, depending on whether the tracing point is inside or outside the circumference. If the point is on the circumference, the resulting curve is called a cycloid. Cycloids are very special, and they are the star of this episode. Now, I've been working with Adam Savage a lot lately as we gear up for Brain Candy Live, our 40-city tour that I hope to see you at. Recently, I asked Adam for some help with roulettes. Adam, do you have a favorite polygon? <laughs> um, the whole group, I just, I'm literally an actual big you fan. You can't, they're like your children, you can't yeah. pick a favorite. I, uh, I don't have a favorite either. I do have a favorite thing that you can do with a polygon. Okay. Make a cyclagon. A cyclagon? Yeah. A cyclagon is an actual thing yeah, that's it's not an a actual superhero. Thing. It's an actual thing. Um, do we have a polygon around here? Uh, here, this, this here's a square, right? Right. Say this is a square. Yeah. If I take one of the vertexes of this square mm -hmm. and I start rolling this square and you follow where that vertex, oh shoot. Let me roll this better. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, the actual path. It describes a curve. Described here, yeah, that curve is called a cyclagon. Oh. And as you pick polygons with more and more sides, you get closer and closer to what I want from you today. Okay. A cycloid. A cycloid. Now, I, I could have just done this in Photoshop and done like an animation like I normally do, mm -hmm. but you have a shop. We can actually build this. And you can build things. Okay. Why did I want to build a cycloid? Well, let me ask you this. With only gravity to move you, what's the fastest way to roll or slide from a point to some other point below, but not directly below? Would it be a straight line? Well, that would certainly be the shortest path, but when you fall, 
gravity accelerates you, and falling vertically a lot right away would mean having a higher top speed during more of the journey. And that can more than make up for the fact that a path like this is much longer than a straight line. But of these two considerations, accelerate quickly and don't have too long of a path, what's the optimal combination? Finding the answer, the path of least time, is called the brachistochrone problem, and it's been around for a while. Galileo thought the answer was a path that's just a piece of a circle, but he was wrong. There's a better one. And in 1697, Johann Bernoulli came up with the answer using a very clever approach. To see how he solved it, let's start with a similar problem. You are standing in some mud, and you want to run to a ball in the street as quickly as possible. Now, a straight line would be the path of shortest distance, but if you can run on pavement much faster than you can run in mud, the path of shortest time would be one in which you spend less time moving slowly in mud and more time on the surface you're fast on. The angle you should enter the pavement at depends on how fast you move on both surfaces. As it turns out, when the ratio between the signs of these two angles equals the ratio between your speeds across both surfaces, the resulting path will be the optimal quickest route. This is called Snell's Law. Light always obeys Snell's Law. When it changes speeds, like when it leaves a material in which it moves more slowly, like water, and enters one in which it moves more quickly, like air, it always refracts according to Snell's law. In other words, light always follows the route that is the fastest for it to take. Bernoulli used this fact to tackle the brachistochrone problem. Light changing speed is analogous to a falling object changing speed. But of course, a falling object doesn't just speed up once, its speed is always increasing, it's accelerating. To mimic this, using light, which Bernoulli knew would always show him the fastest possible route, all he had to do was add more and more thinner and thinner layers in which the speed of light was faster and faster and faster. And, well, what do you know? There it is, the Brachistochrone curve the path of least time. Roll down a track like this, and you will beat anything rolling down any other path every time. Bernoulli was clever enough to realize that this curve can be described in another way, as a roulette. Specifically, he noticed that it was a cycloid, the path traced by a point on a circle rolling along a line. A cycloid satisfies Snell's law everywhere. To see why, I highly recommend watching this video on the Brachistochrone problem. This channel is fantastic, by the way. I'm a huge fan. The visuals and explanations are top-notch. Anyway, a cycloid provides the perfect balance between keeping the journey distance short and picking up speed early. Now, I told Adam all of this, and I told him that it would be really fun to have a cycloid curve we could roll things down, and he said, Clearly, we should start building. We should just start building it. What we need is a circle okay. that's of the height that we want, mm -hmm. and then we're going to use that circle to trace and out make a the cycloid. cycloid curve. I want to do a race, right? So yeah, if yeah, we're yeah. gonna look, if we're gonna do like if you have point A here and point B here, and you say that there's some kind of curve that's better than a straight line in terms of something traveling between those two then I want to also make a, a straight line from A to B. Yeah, and maybe also a really extreme curve, like that. Right, okay. Got some protractors there. there Ooh. I have You have a compass extension. I do. I have all sorts of... I've never seen such a thing. Is extra, that it? Yeah. That connects to that, and that connects to that. That's gonna be. Right. Give or take. I I almost uh, am. Uh, I feel guilty that this is like a dream of mine coming true. Oh really? But it's such a nerdy dream too. It's not like I want this, you know, Red Rider BB gun. It's like I just want a curve that things roll down. Okay. So then clearly, when we're done with this, this is uh, this is my Christmas present to you. 
Um, I think I'm, I'm currently like working out a way to do this in my head that actually um, makes it fairly compact and not super, uh, not super complicated. Yeah. Um, take a blade and cut out like an inch around this uh -huh. whole thing. How are you gonna do the finishing? Uh, I am going to cut this, unless you would like to, on the bandsaw. You can start. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now, uh, that's a little bit rough, so we're gonna finish it on my disc sander. Oh, wow. That's close enough. It's pretty good, us. yeah. So now you want to use this to draw a, cy a cycloid. Yeah. Um, so you'll need a little hole. That's what I'm, yeah, so that the point of our drawing implement is on the rim, not above it. I'm doing this right inside. Oh, I messed that up. Let's try I don't it. think so. It isn't, no? yeah, that's, all right? be, I mean, that's even better than having the rim hole because we want the line to be right on the edge. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pattern for the cycloid curve that I'm then going to transfer to acrylic, to clear acrylic. Great, and that'll great. allow us to see things really clearly. Yeah. Um, so, I have this in here. And this allows you to right, roll yeah. your cycloid, right? Because we're <clears> just <throat> doing, it is literally like that, right? Oh yeah, see this is perfect, yeah. Pushed against here, I shouldn't slip. This is like a Ouija board for geometry nerds. It is a Ouija board for geometry nerds. Okay, there we go. That's it's spelled out. Brachistochrone! That's, that's, it. that's the curve that we're talking about. Yeah. That's the beginning, that's the end, and this is our pattern. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's cool. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna end up with uh, with a piece of plywood. It's, let's say three quarters of an inch thick, but it's gonna have channels table sawed out of it mm -hmm. that travel its length, and in those channels will sit my clear acrylic acrylic curves, and it'll also have an upright that also will have the channels milled out of it on the table saw. And that will allow the curve to sit and be supported. Yeah, a little backstop here, easily at the bottom, mm -hmm. that'll allow us to hear that they all hit at the same time. There's a couple things going on. One is, is that we've got a uh, cycloid, straight line, and then we've got extreme curve. <sighs> right, and are these you had mentioned bending the acrylic so we could adjust the No, actually, now. I have, uh, this is, you'll like this. Okay. So the acrylic will just be a fin of acrylic, mm -hmm. just a thin sheet of it. Traveling on that will be, and I have material for this, some Delrin or acetyl rollers that look like this. So from the side, they'll look like this. They'll look like an H. Uh-huh. In which, the acrylic sits in there, mm -hmm. and the roller is self-supporting on the acrylic, but rolls down it. Ah, oh, that is tolerance. I love it. I like those curves. While Adam and I build a real-life cycloid track, let's take some time to appreciate other kinds of roulettes. As mentioned before, trochoids are curves made by discs rolling on straight lines. But an epitrochoid is made when a disc rolls around the outside of a circle. Roll a disc inside a circle, and what you've made is a hypotrochoid. These are the mathematical names for the curves you make when using a spirograph toy. Notice that the holes don't lie on the circumference of the discs, though some do come close. 
There's a special name for epitrochoids and hypotrochoids traced by points on circumferences. Analogous to disks rolling on straight lines, they are epicycloids and hypocycloids. Now, if two circles have the same radius, a point on the rolling one will touch the stationary one exactly once, always in the same spot, creating a cusp. This cute heart-shaped epicycloid is also known as a cardioid. If the rolling circle has half the larger's radius, you'll get a two-cusped epicycloid, the shape of which is called a nephroid, because it apparently looks like a kidney, I guess. One third the radius gives you three cusps, one fourth four cusps, and so on. As for hypocycloids, if the inner circle's radius is one quarter of the larger's, the resulting roulette curve is called an asteroid because it looks like a star, which the ancients also thought about asteroids. One third the radius and you've got a deltoid, named after its resemblance to the Greek letter delta. One half the radius and, well, you get a straight line. This fun relationship is called a Tusi couple, rotational motion turned into linear motion. Follow a number of points on the rolling circle and you'll get the famous illusion where every individual point moves in a straight line, but the whole thing describes a rolling circle. Put a handle on it and you've built a trammel of Archimedes, aka an ellipsograph when used to make ellipses, aka a hillbilly entertainment center when bought in Osceola, Missouri. Anyway, let's get back to Adam and I's curve comparison build. I have a finish line. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Okay. There's your finish line. You ready? <clears throat> I'm ready. All right, I'll count us down. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three. With the the straight... steep was second. Straight was last. The straight was last. Yeah. The shortest yeah. distance between two points was, was last. The slowest way to get there. Yeah, it certainly was. Let's try it one more time. Yep. Because it was super close. Um, the Brachista Crone curve was by far the winner. Yeah. What a mouthful of a name, by the way. <laughs> Bra Brachista Bra Crone. Crone. Brachista Crone. Not related to the Brachiosaur. I looked it up. They're different, <laughs> different roots. That's. I once looked up the difference between ingenious and ingenuity, and they don't have the and same. And they're not root. related. No. <laughs> All right, you All ready? Right. I'm ready. Count okay. it in. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Same result? Same result. One, two, but three. But these are so close, it's hard to tell. Well, we're answering the main question, which is that the brachistochrome curve is the fastest way to get there. Well, a brachistochrone curve is also known as a totochrome curve <laughs> that has another property that's, that we, we should test. Which is? And that is, uh, it's also Wait, known... Hold up, before you yeah, get yeah. to this, we've established between these three curves that the cycloid-made brachistochrome curve is by far the fastest. It's by far the fastest. Okay, great. You get steep. And yep. unfortunately, you pick up a lot of speed right away, but then you've got a lot of this with little acceleration. Yep. You go straight down and, you know, funny enough, you, what you want is that perfect balance of gravity's acceleration, but also moving to where you need to be. And that's this fast. That's fascinating shape, to me that a geometry, which is the cycloid curve, would yield such an efficient um, exploitation of the forces involved. Yeah, exactly. Because if, if there was no acceleration, if, if there was just one force in the beginning, straight line would probably be the fastest. Right. Okay. What is the other quality of the tautochrome curve? You just said it. Okay. Tautochrome means same time. So, as the geometry and math tells us, no matter where you start an object... Yeah. Whoop. Whoops, the clamp just fell off. That was your fault. Pretty. It was my fault, but also, come on, clamp. No, no, it's actually. Do you know this, how to do this? These thing? tables are a pain in the ass because they have these lips on them, and they actually. Oh, that's like a. a yeah, thin. they drive me nuts. It's it's actually my fault. 
Good. I'm glad we got that resolved. <laughs> so, okay. so uh, I'm going to remove the straight line guy mm -hmm. as well. So we're left with a cycloid, which uh, is called a brachistochrone curve, but it also has a bizarre property where no matter where I start an object on it, when I let go, they always reach the bottom Wait in the same second. amount of time. Wait a second. So if I start it here, the amount of time it takes for this to get to the end is the same amount of time it takes for it to get to the end from here? Yeah. And the same from right here. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So starting from here, it's going to be tough because of friction. Yeah. Now, if you do this in software, it's perfect. But <laughs> that's boring. Yeah. This is the real world. And... Maybe yeah. we, won't, we won't start the net list. <laughs> I mean, if we do one, two, and three, yeah. where we actually have and some I feel like we could, pro we could probably get one to work from here. Like that, there might be a lot of friction involved, but let's, let's, we could uh, always see. We could always see. We've got enough of them. We've got to peel these. That's why we made three curves, so we could test this property. And these were all cut and sanded, clamped together, so they are incredibly similar. Uh, I will have to... Uh, Chamfer the edge as I did on this one. Yeah, that's and true. And we'll hit it with some Scotch Brite and what's it? Steel wool. Okay. A little note fact that once you've torn paper off of plexiglass, it crumples into a really nice ball and can be thrown long distances. Hey. How did they get this paper on the plexiglass in the first place? That's a good question. I've never seen it happen. Because it doesn't really feel glued. Well, they've got some kind no glue of 3M resin. glue on it, right? Yeah. I think this is going to be really cool. I hope it's cool because in theory and practice, theory and, in theory, theory and practice are the same thing, but in practice... <laughs> I went to the University of Chicago where one of their sayings is... Well, that sounds good in practice, but how is it in theory? <laughs> it's the life of the mind there. So let us see if you do... If I do one up here... And you do one there, and okay, yeah, so this has got to be without this. I think the same person should release them, because then you okay. can time it better. So here, put that one here. Okay. All right, so three different positions. Three this different positions. This one has longer to go. Yep. This one has the shortest Oop. path. So who's going to reach the bottom first? Okay, well, here we go. The, let's the, see. Uh, release intuition when you're would ready. say the one in my, this one yeah. would go first. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Pretty Dude! Good. Pretty good. That was awesome! That was so They all nice like, rip, they lined right up. All right, let's do, let's, let's switch it up. Okay. Even I think you're going to have to be the one to release them, because yeah. otherwise it won't be easy to tie. Here we go. Three, two, one. Pretty I watched cool. them lining up. Yeah, they, they line up like they're waiting for each other. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to stand further away, because I want to see the full path. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Three. Two, one. How cool is that? They, 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 they totally line up to hit at about the same period as they would for here. So given the vagaries of some extra frictions here and there, they're, they're actually hitting this at the same sort of periodicity that they are when they start at the same point. So there's that, and then... This, um, is this the Todachrome curve demonstration rig of your dreams? Uh, it really is. It really <laughs> is. Uh, it's also the Brachistochrone rig of my dreams and the Cycloid rig of my dreams. So check that keep, out. Keep doing that, yeah. That is really cool. Another one. Yeah, that was yeah. exactly on point. Wow. Race ya. <laughs> See, in this game, no matter where you start, no matter who you are, you're always a winner. Everybody's a winner. There's always a tie. So this is brain candy for me, Adam. It, totally. This is, this is something that was previously abstract and only seen in animations and, and in text made real. Yeah. Now I can put these wherever I want. I'm not stuck with what someone else did. I can physically hold it, and that's, 
That's what makes brain candy exciting for it me. It is. It is like to, I love taking the theoretical and making it physical. And actually, honestly, um, we've always had what seemed to me like sister enterprises. Yeah. And it's nice to join them together. Yeah. This is this is a little child of ours, isn't it? <laughs> and it, it is. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe one of us wasn't so good at sanding, and maybe uh, the other of us uh, kind of saved the day. But it's, it's real now, yeah, and it's exactly. alive, and I think it's loving its life. That was fun. Hey, it was really fun. <laughs> thank you. This is my dream come true. Adam, thank you so much for your help. Working with you is always amazing. I hope to see all of you out there watching at Brain Candy Live. It's going to be incredible. And in your daily lives, may you always find the Totochrome, the solution that brings you and others together, even if you started in different places. And as always, thanks for watching.